Hello everyone, welcome to JavaScript Crash Course 2021. This is a beginner level crash course to give the basic understanding of this awesome programming language. I'll try to make this course as comprehensive as possible. However, programming language like JavaScript can really be massive and it's not possible to cramp all the features into one single video. For this reason, I included some books and web resources, which are all free in the description for you to learn more and deep dive. But this video will definitely get you started with JavaScript. We will talk about why you should learn JavaScript in 2021, what is JavaScript, syntax of JavaScript, and all the basics of modern JS. Prerequisites for this video, you do not have to have any programming experience at all. I will talk you through the whole process. However, you do need to have basic understanding of HTML and CSS. If you don't know HTML and CSS, I have almost an hour video on HTML and a complete series on CSS in my channel. Link will be in the description and in the card. I recommend you to watch those videos first before jumping onto this course. Before I start, I just want to mention if you like this video, please give me a like and subscribe. It means a lot. Without further ado, uh, let's start it. So why JavaScript in 2021? There are lots of reasons. I have mentioned few here. JavaScript is one of the most popular programming language. In fact, I will show you a survey done by Stack Overflow. If you know what Stack Overflow is, Stack Overflow is built by developers and for developers. And chances are, if you ever search any technical terms in Google, the first result will be from Stack Overflow. So they do a survey every year. And uh, as you can see, JavaScript is the most wanted programming language and sits here at the second position. So it's a very popular programming language. It has huge community support. You will find a lot of resources just like this one right here. You're watching a lot of YouTube videos, a lot of articles, and I found JavaScript developers to be very helpful uh, with uh, each other. Uh, also, it's a very easy to learn language compared to other languages for beginners. JavaScript is the native language for front end development. So all the browsers, they run JavaScript natively. Google Chrome and Mozilla Firefox, they have their own JavaScript engine under the hood. Google Chrome uses V8 engine and uh, Mozilla Firefox uses SpiderMonkey JavaScript engine. It can also be run as server side code with Node.js. Node.js is a JavaScript runtime environment. There is a very talented programmer called Ryan Dull. He built Node.js since 2009 and uh, it, it is built on uh, around uh, Chrome's V8 engine built on C++. So Node.js can run JavaScript and with the help of Node.js, you can pretty much run JavaScript anywhere. So you can run on server side, you can build relational databases with JavaScript code, make APIs, endpoints with JavaScript. So for this region, JavaScript is one of the most versatile programming language out there. Now, I also want to put it out there is that the programming language you want to learn should be dictated by what you want to do in your career. I say this because I've seen a lot of YouTube videos and articles. They always talk about five programming language to learn, uh, five best programming or 10 best programming language to learn. To get decent at a single programming language, it actually takes a while. It takes time. You can learn the basics, but to actually be good at something, it depends on the experience level. So I would say if you know what you want to do, for example, if you want to be a machine learning and AI field, then I would say look into Python. You can do machine learning with JavaScript too, but it's just a programming language that the data scientists choice uh, that they go with Python, especially because they have a lot of packages that's available. Same goes with C++ with game developing uh, because C++ is very fast uh, programming language. And also, I also want to say that if you know which company, if you have a certain company that you want to work for, or maybe you are already in that company and look uh, what programming languages they want uh, for their junior developers. I know for Amazon, they uh, want their junior programmers to know Java as an object oriented programming. Now, at this point, I will let you know that even though Java and JavaScript, they share the same Java name, they are completely two different languages. Okay. Okay. Enough banter. Now let's know what is JavaScript. 
Okay, so as you can see in the title here, JavaScript, also known as ECMAScript, and also known as, in short, JS. JS is a high-level interpreted language. So what I mean by high-level, there are two types of programming language. One is low-level and high-level. And to give you a very loose and simple example is going to be the difference between a high-level and C-level is going to be like automatic car versus a stick shift or manual gear car. So manual gear car, you have to change the gear yourself. An automatic car, all the gear changes and everything done automatically for you. You don't even have to think about this. Same thing with high level and low level language. In a low level language, uh, I will give an example of a low level language, which is C. Uh, C is a very old programming language. JavaScript and Java both actually gets their syntax from that programming language C. So in language like C, if you want to create a variable, you have to first is strictly typed. You have to say what type of variable you, you want to create. If you're trying to create an array, you have to say how many bytes of array you, you're trying to get. You have to think about your memory allocation, release the memory. A lot of other stuff that you have to take care of yourself with this low level language. And um, to the contrast, on the high level language, you don't have to think about this type of variable at all. Like JavaScript, you can just create a variable and then um, uh, the type comes in at the runtime. So you don't have to worry about writing the type. It's a dynamically typed um, JavaScript language. Most of our programming language, uh, modern programming language, is high level these days. Interpreted language, so when JavaScript was created, it was created as a lightweight uh, scripting language and mainly for browsers. So uh, it gets interpreted by line by line, which makes JavaScript a little bit slower than other languages. For an example, Java is a compiled language. So if you want to work with Java, you also have to download something called a compiler, which is called JDK, which compiles the language and then um, to translate into machine code, where JavaScript gets interpreted at, at the runtime line by line. But I also want to show you something, a notation from V8 engine, which V8 compiles and executes JavaScript source code, handles memory allocation for objects, and garbage, collect, garbage collects objects it no longer needs. So V8 engines, they kind of work as a compiler for JavaScript, making JavaScript really strong and really fast. The second uh, definition would be JavaScript is multi-paradigm language, so it can be used as an object-oriented programming or a functional programming, where uh, some other programming language like Java is object-oriented programming. Everything in Java is a class, is object-based, and uh, they don't have functions. The functions is attached with the class, so they call it methods. Uh, so uh, JavaScript can be work as object oriented or functional program. All right. So third definition would be it follows ECMAScript specification, also known as ES5, ES6, and so forth. There's like ES7, ES8. So ECMAScript is an international kind of governing body which publish specification. Okay, JavaScript should have this type of features, and then JavaScript gets impl implemented with those features. At the end, it's uh, like I said before, it can be run on browser, uh, like we can do. DOM manipulation with JavaScript as well as server side code um, with Node.js. All right, so that's it with our definition. So for the next stop, I am going to show you the table of contents, the stuff that I'm going to work with in this video. I will show you the Chrome developer tools. We'll talk about script tag. That means like how you attach your uh, uh, your JavaScript file to your HTML file, how to comment, variables, operators, uh, finding remainder, all this will uh, I will uh, explain. Now for this uh, explanation, I will also add some timestamp. All right, so let's start it. Let's write some code. So first we will talk about what is Chrome DevTools. So I'll be using Chrome web browser. This web browser, I am in the V8 engine docs. So right here, if I right click on it, I can go at the bottom that say inspect. So in Windows, it has also a shortcut control shift I, but I can just click inspect. And it is going to open this window to the side right here. So it is going to be elements is going to be selected at the top. And here, if I click, you can see that I can actually select each element and see their HTML. Like if I click on here, it's taking me this one. So it's an LI tag. So it's a very handy features. Um, it's called DevTools. And I can actually see how they created this web page. So these are all lists. See their styles that's applied to it. 
So these are the styles that apply to these particular elements. So it's very powerful, but we don't want to see elements in this video today. We want to see console. So this is where we can actually write JavaScript code. I'm going to go right here in the three dots, click, and I'm going to undock this one. So I can just work on this particular page and I can actually write stuff. I can do calculations. So I can say one plus one. And you can see right here is showing me that it's going to be two. If I enter is giving me two, I can do multiplication. So two, let's say times three, and then it's actually, uh, it's giving me six, I can do divide as well. So six divide two, it's giving me three. So I can do multiplication. I can also do something like this, I can do console dot log. Uh, open parentheses and here I in a quotation, I can say, hello, world. And if I enter, you see that now hello world is running. So I'm logging in this console, hello world. Okay, so we'll be this is uh, dev tools. So we'll be working on this, but we'll create our own HTML page. So here I'm working on uh, Visual Studio code. Uh, I do have, I'm going to just get rid of the script tag, I'm going to show you how, uh, how I did this. So I have an index.js file, I have an index, uh, just a simple boilerplate index HTML file. Now I'll be working in Visual Studio Code, you can work in whatever co code editor you like. Uh, but one thing I'm going to do with Visual Studio Code, though, I'm going to go to extension. And then I'll search for live server right here. So this is the one I'm going to install it. So I already install installed it uh, so that it will run spin up a local server for me. So I don't have to um, refresh the page each time I save something. So that's what I'm going to do. If you want to follow along, uh, if you want to uh, use VS code, just Google VS code and download the it's, a, it's run by Microsoft. And um, they have a Mac version and Windows version. And on once you download, you can add the extension to the live server. So on this one, I'm going to do right click, and I'm going to open up with this live server. So let's put something here, though, let's put like an h1. And I'm going to say, JS crash course 2021, I'm going to save this and open with live server It should open up in my browser, which is you can see right here. All right. Now let's hook up our index files. As you can see, I have an index.js file available. And I want to add it through a script tag. So I will do this, there are a couple of ways you can add script tag to your HTML. I'm going to add the script tag at the very bottom just before the ending body tag. So I'm going to say script. Uh, I'm going to choose a second one that will have the source. And since my index file is also with uh, my index HTML folder, I can just say index.js. And if I save this, and go here, I can, uh, this is now hooked. Now I can, I can run a check whether it is actually hooked. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to say alert, open parentheses here in quotation, I'm going to say working, just to see if it's working. So if I save this, you see that right now it's going giving me an alert. So yes, it is all hooked up and working. Go back to my VS code again, I'm going to delete this. So um, you can add script tag at the very bottom. The reason you want to add script tag at the bottom is because you want your HTML, you want your a browser to parse your HTML first, because uh, a JavaScript parsing JavaScript might take a little bit of time. So you don't want your viewers to wait for your JavaScript because you're, if you put your JavaScript at the very top, it's going to run your script first, and then load everything else. Yeah, so that's a good idea to always put your script tag at the end. Now, if you want to put your script tag, not at the end, but in the head title, you can do that with if you use a keyword like defer. So what defer does, it parses with the uh, HTML together. And then 
once this parse completes, then it gets executed. So you can search and I think Web Simplified uh, YouTube video did, did a good YouTube video ver, uh, on async versus defer. I recommend you to check that video out. I'll see if I can add that link in my description. But if you wanna use script tag uh, in the head tag, uh, you can use the keyword defar and that would solve your problem. It's just your, uh, it's not gonna wait for parsing your script tag. Now, everything I will do is I'm gonna do it here in the index. So in the Chrome, I'll go again in the inspect and I will pull up this and I will go uh, cons console. I'm gonna put this, if I do now console log, Hello world, save. You see it's logging on here. Let me make this console log a little bit bigger so you can see. All right, so so how can you comment? So this is, so you can comment two ways. You can do single line comment and you can do multi-line comment. The multi-line comment is same as CSS. If you know how to comment in CSS, it's the same. So you, you're gonna do slash and then a star. And to close this, you're gonna do uh, star and slash. And then you can just create lots of line here and it's all gonna be commented out. So it's a multi-line comment. If you wanna comment like a bunch of code together, you can use this tag, right? So slash star and then close it star slash. And for single line comment, you use just two slash. So this is a single line comment. And you see that nothing happening on this page because it's a comment, it's not getting executed. Okay, I am going to go talk about now variables. I'm gonna go back to my slides just to see what's the table of contents look like. All right, so we are talking about uh, variables. What is variables? Again, I'm gonna try to make it simple to understand. Variables are like bucket. So you put some stuff in the bucket and then in return, you can you get to use that bucket, you get, you get to carry that bucket, every, bucket everywhere, okay? Now the stuff you put in that bucket are called values or data in programming language. And that bucket is called variable, right? You are actually, it's a container for a lot of values that you can put in. And that container gets saved into your memory, into your machine, all right? So that's what va variable simply is. Now, there are three ways you can create variables in JavaScript. Now here, uh, I'll create another comment. Uh, the first keyword you can use to create a variable is var. And then uh, the second one is const. And the third one will be let. I'm gonna talk about var first. Now var is the oldest one. You should not use var anymore because var has some limitation. You should always use const and let. There are more modern syntax. But I'm gonna show you var anyway because you are going to see some code out there that uses var. So how am I going to create a variable and assign a value to it? So I'm gonna say var because if I say var, you see that it changes the color and I'm telling JavaScript, hey, I'm about to create a variable, the bucket that I'm going to create. Now this particular bucket or container, I can give, I can give a name. What name I should give, it completely depends uh, on me. I can just, just give x equal to a given number three and then semicolon. Now semicolon in JavaScript is kind of optional. You can close this with semicolon. Even if you don't do it, it's still gonna work. Like if I do right here, um, console log x and save, you see it giving you the value three because three is now assigned to this variable name x. Now here, so you created a variable name x and then equal sign and I'm assigning this, uh, this value number three, which is a number to this bucket. So this number is right now in this bucket called X. Now you notice this equal. Now this equal is different than a mathematical equal. Mathematical equal is, uh, it compares equality, right? The right hand side equals to left hand side. This equal is not that. This equal is an assignment. Assignment is different from equality. So it's not saying that three is, is the same value quality like X, but it is three is inside X. Okay. And then I also can do something like this. I can do like X equals now four. 
Now, if I save this, now you see it gets updated four. So if I console log X now, it's gonna update, it's gonna give me four because I just updated it. I reassign X to four, okay? So I can do that. All right, so I'm gonna show you now what const means. I'm gonna get rid of this and I'm gonna get rid of far and I'm gonna say const. Const means it's a constant and um, it's gonna work the same way. So if I save this, it's gonna give me three because right now const x and I took care, you know, take away the other uh, reassignment of x and it's x equals three now, okay? I can do this, it's a modern syntax. Now with const though, I cannot do something like this. So if I do this, if I save, you see that it's giving me an error. Assignment to constant variable. Okay, that mean, this is the purpose of constant, is that once I already assigned a variable, I cannot reassign them. So the difference between const and let is that let actually works just like var. So with let, now if I save this, you see now it is getting up, uh, updated because let is not a constant. Let will let you update or reassign uh, the x, the variable that you created. Now also let is better than var because again, uh, the limitation that var has, I wanna show you something else. I wanna show you that you can initialize a variable without giving a value. So it's like this, I can do something like this that const cannot. So if you do like const new variable called y and then semicolon save, it's going to give you another error, missing initializer in const decoration. So you cannot create just a variable, in initialize a variable. You can create something like this though with const, maybe empty string, that's good. You can also create a array, save, that's good too. There's nothing in there, uh, but you can, but it is assigned something, it assigned a type. So this is an array type and uh, with the quotation, it was an, a string type that is atta attached with this const. So don't worry, we're gonna talk about string and array later on. I just wanted to give you some example. So you cannot initialize a variable with const but you can do this with let. So here, you can just initialize a variable. Then you, if you wanna decide that, you know what, I'm going to later reassign y to five, and it's gonna get reassigned. So I can, let's, let's comment this first, save. It's not gonna give me any, um, any error. In fact, if I console log y right now, we're just initializing it, save, you see it's giving me an undefined value. It's telling me that y is not defined. That means I did not give, I did not assign any value to y. But if I uncomment this now, save, now it gets assigned number, f uh, number five to y, and this is showing five, okay. All right, even though I am showing you uh, with a variable name X and Y and X and Y, it's not a good practice. We wanna create a variable that is meaningful. Like instead of X, if I say this is gonna be a random number, it actually is meaningful right now because chances are you're not going to be the only person that's working on a program some other people are also going to work on. So they have to know what this X means, okay? So X actually doesn't tell. So it's good to be verbose when creating a variable. Try to use a, a meaningful uh, variable name so that I know what this variable is. So I'm gonna say random number and assign three. I'm gonna say, instead of Y, I'm gonna say another number and I'm gonna just reassign this one right here and then console log this save you see same exact thing all right so I am going to get rid of this too so now another thing is that I can actually reassign another number to random number. So I can reassign not only values, I can reassign a variable to another variable. So right now, this another number is getting initialized with just no values in it, okay? And then this, val uh, this variable right here, random number has a value three. So if I uh, console log another number, you can see that I'm getting undefined. But what if I just take this and reassign this equal 
to random number and then save you'll see now another number has the value three as well both number now has number three so the purpose of this lesson is that you can assign a variable to another variable all right so let me go back to the table of contents and see okay so next up we're going to learn about operators so if you hover you see the clear console so i can click on here it's going to clear it so we at the beginning when we were actually discussing about the dev tools we saw that you can do multiplication plus everything right so javascript uh recognizes plus for plus minus uh times multiplication is going to be the star and then slash is going to be for division okay we can all use all these op operators we can also use uh, equal okay so I I told you before that equal sign in JavaScript means assignment sign and not equality sign so we do have equality sign which is gonna be double equals now double equals is gonna be is gonna mean that okay it's equality is gonna measure equality just like in mathematics there is another one uh, is gonna be triple equals I will recommend you to use triple equal whenever you can. So triple equal is a strictly uh, measures the both of them. It's uh, it measures not only the data or the value itself, but also measures is the type of both are the same. All right. And then we also have some less than and then greater than values for comparison. We also have uh, less than or equal to. We also have greater than or equal to like this. And we also have something called a not equal. So for that, I would use exclamation and then double equals. That one is going to is going to give me a not equal. OK, so exclamation basically means not in JavaScript. So when I say exclamation and then double equals, I'm basically saying that give me the opposite of uh, equal, which is not equal. All right, so let's just practice. I'm going to say one. Uh, I'm going to actually console log so I can see here. So I will do console log in a parenthesis. I'll say one plus one. Save. You see two. I will use, let's say here, six minus. Now it's going to give me five. I will say here multiplication. And this time, actually, I'm going to do two. Save. You see, six times two is 12. And then slash is going to give me three. Six divided by uh, two is three. OK. All right. Now, what if I use uh, some of the equals? So equal, equal, six. What it's going to give us? So if I save it, it's going to give me a true. So this is called a Boolean value. We're going to talk about Boolean value. We're going to talk about uh, data types. But no, it's actually telling you that, yes, it is true because both are same. And then if you use triple equals as well, save is also going to say true. OK, now here, if you say uh, less than six, save is going to give you false. Again, another Boolean value. Boolean value is like two values, true or false. So six is not less than six, it's equal. So that's why it's giving you false. Uh, greater than, it's also giving you false. If I just do, uh, let's say four, it's gonna give you true. And then for this one, same thing, it's gonna give you a Boolean value if it's uh, over or equal. Like if I do six here, say, it's gonna give you true because it is equal. So it's basically saying whether six is greater than or equal to six. Okay, and not equal is going to give you false because six and six are equal. So this is how you can use all these operators. You can use them in console log. Okay, now one more thing, one more operator uh, that you might not know about, which is it's going to be like finding the remainder. So this is how it does. It's just we use um, percent sign. Uh, so that is also known as mod. So I'm going to say console log instead of this. If I do percent six percent six is basically I'm saying six divided by six. Give me the remainder of that uh, division. So if I save this, you see the remainder would be zero. Now, if I do a three, this also remainder would be zero. But if I want to do five, 
it's gonna give me one because that is the remainder. If I divide six by five, it's gonna give me one. Okay, so by this sign right here, which is called mod, it is, it's just gonna give you a remainder of the, uh, of the division. All right, let's get rid of this one, clear the console. Uh, let's talk about now data types. Okay, so in case of data types, so we talked about the value, the data, right, that we store in a variable. Now in JavaScript, there are uh, several data types. So I'm gonna go back to the slide here and just to show you what type of data type. So these are the uh, data types, also known as primitive types. So we got number, string, boolean, null, and undefined. So what is number type represent both integers and floating points. So, okay, so let's go back to our VS code. Number is includes all the integers and floating points. Now integers is all the number from minus to negative to plus. It has a limit, uh, but most of the cases uh, you won't ever need to uh, pass that limit. If you ever have to pass that limit, then you can use something called big end, which uh, basically increases how many digits you can store in your memory, okay? So we're not gonna talk about big int right now, but I'm gonna definitely show you what is number. So number, uh, so like three, four, five, or minus, so like um, integers are numbers. Now, it includes integers and also floating points. Now floating points are decimals. So 4.5, 5.6, these are known as floating point numbers in computer programming, okay? So it all uh, are type of number. So infinity and nan is also part of the number. So infinity is, let's say, uh, let me console log. Let me console log one divide by zero. And if I save this, it's gonna give me an infinity. So that's a type as well. Should do not number, save. It's gonna give me nan. Nan means not a number. So right now I am dividing this string to two, which is obviously, it's not possible. So it's gonna give you nan, not a number, which is of number type. All right, get rid of this. Now, number two, data types is gonna be string. String, anything that is in between quotation is a string. So I'm actually going to create uh, some number variables. So three, I'm gonna go ahead and do string equals to so anything between uh, let's say coding is cool. Anything between a quotation will be a string. And let's say we have Boolean. So I'm gonna say is logged in equals, I'm gonna say true or let's say false at the beginning. And another one is gonna be null equals to null. Value null. So let's say a variable, okay? And we already saw undefined. So I have a number. I can see what type of this data types by just console logging. And I can say like type of, type of here. Um, and then if I give this variable number name, it's gonna give me what type of uh, value this is. So if I save this, look, it's actually gonna give me a type number because three is a number because it's an integer, okay? If I use 3.5, it's a floating number, that's also a type of number. Okay, so here if I use string and save, this is a string, even if I call this one string, but the value string is actually coding is cool. So the type of, because it is within the quotation, it's actually giving you the type string. 
And uh, what about is logged in? This is going to be a Boolean. So Boolean, if I save this, this is the Boolean. So Boolean is whether it can be two values. It's going to be either true or false. So true or false are Boolean values. Null, if I do now null, uh, with big capital L, it's actually going to give me an object, but this is bogus. You can search why null is, um, type of null is um, object in Google, you will see there's a definition, but it's actually a bogus type of, that's a that's a, that's something, uh, uh, JavaScript weird part, uh, but this is a bogus value. Null is actually a null. Null basically means empty. So you don't have anything. I have created a variable, and um, created a variable, but I did not put anything. So it has, I, I just uh, have some space available, did not put anything that is null. So I have that null. And then at, at end variable, uh, click here and it gets undefined because I did not define it. So these are the data types known as primitive types. So I got number, I get string, I get is logged in. Uh, so string would be anything. So even, even if I put something like a number, it's also going to be, uh, let's say, let me console log string. It's also going to be a string as long as it is within the quotation. And then a Boolean values null and undefined. All right, let me go back to table of contents. That's going to be our data types. And let's work with string data types. Okay, let's look at the strings and string methods. For a second here so i'm going to create a string here i'm going to call it hello equal to now uh, strings are everything that is within a quotation so i'm going to use double quotation and i'm going to say hello world now here uh, one thing you have to notice is that uh, string can be used with both uh, double quotation or single quotation so i can use uh, something like this and then if i console log hello, you can see that it's actually going to cons uh, log the hello world here. Now, one problem is that with a single quotation, like let's say I want to say, uh, I want to put a sentence like this, I don't want to play. So here you see that I cannot use a single quotation within a single quotation because it's going to, JavaScript is going to uh, think that this is the end of a string. So to get around this, what I can do is I can make the outer quotation double quote. So it doesn't uh, interfere with the inside single quotation because JavaScript now thinking that double quotation needs to end at the end. Um, another way you can do it, if you do insist on using single quotation, you can escape this with this slash. So slash quotation, if you save this, now it works as uh, as you want to. All right, so I'm going to keep it uh, double quote. And it's just preference, what do you want to do with single code or uh, double quotes. Um, I am now going to add something, I'm going to show you, let's go back to hello world. And here I'm going to show you some of the methods that are available in strings. Now here, uh, if I do dot, it means that uh, dot go in this particular variable. And here it's there are uh, some uh, methods available. So I can uh, first I'm going to show you something called two uppercase. And then I'm going to use the camel case. That means the first word will be small letters and every word comes after it will be sentence case. So two uppercase and I'm going to invoke this method with this parentheses, even though it does not take any inputs. But this is how uppercase uh, work. So hello, dot go into this, and then invoke this particular uh, method called two uppercase. So if I save this, you can see that now hello world is all uppercase. Okay, I can do the same thing with lowercase. So I'm just going to change this upper to lower and save and then everything will be lowercase. All right, another thing I can do is I can find the length of this sentence. So I can say, so it's going to be length is uh, goes like a normal uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So it should give me 11. So there we go. It is giving me 11. All right. The next method I'm going to show you is called split. Uh, split also uh, also comes with parentheses and uh, because I will have to give a splitter like I have to give an input that what I want to split this sentence 
with. So if I, and it has to be within quotation, so within quotation, if I just don't put anything, it's going to uh, split this whole sentence into each letter, including the space. Now save this. You can see now it's actually giving me each letter um, within separated by a comma. Okay, now you can uh, notice that it is square brackets around it. Now this is called array. We are going to talk about arrays in a moment after string. So basically split, if I don't as mention any type of separator and then pass in just the uh, quotation, it will separate each letter, including the space, as you can see here, number five, and it, it will give you an array of each letter. Okay. Now you can, let's say if I want to do, let's change this hello world to something um, like this apple banana kiwi. Now if I want to extract just apple or just banana from here, or just, you know, I want to extract each, uh, I want to make an array of each uh, fruit right here. So I can do this, look at this, the separator is actually comma and space. That's the only thing separating between these three fruits. So I can put this one here. So comma space. Now if I save this, now you can see it's going to give me an array of each fruit instead of like being one uh, string right here, it can it will give me an array of fruits, apple, banana, kiwi, so I can extract it, I can save only banana, uh, only apple um, uh, to the database if I want to. Okay. Let's say right now, let's talk about, let's say I just want to get banana out of this whole sentence. Now, how can I do that? So I can do that with something called substring. So if I do sub uh, string, now substring also take parentheses and it will take um, start and the end. So if I put the start and this is going to be the index. So this is going to be the index. Um, the seven, so if, if you look here, so zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So it's actually starting at seven. And in computer world, uh, even though we normally uh, count from one in computer programming, most of the cases you'll be counting from zero. That's going to be the index. So zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So start from seven and then end but not including 13. So this is going to be 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So this all things I need, but don't include this. So I'm going to put this one as the end. It doesn't include the 13. So if I save it right now, now you can see it's extracting just only banana from this string. Another one, it's just um, something called sub, uh, this one, sub string. So it's like str. So it only takes one parameter. So if I do seven, it's actually going to start from seven and it's going to give you all the rest of it from uh, seven. So if I save this, you see right now it's going to give me banana and kiwi. Okay. It also work like if I want to do like reverse water. So I want to do like one, two, zero, one, two, three, four, five, six. So if I want to do like minus six, it's only going to give me kiwi as you can see. Okay, so it can work uh, in the reverse uh, order. All right, so those are uh, a few string methods available for you. Uh, uh, and uh, there are lots of loads of uh, methods available uh, here. So if I do something here, so if I do hello, you can see hello has this apple, banana and kiwi. So I'm going to enter this and if I do console.log and hello, hello dot, you can see that it actually gives me a lot of methods. Replace, replace all, pad, that's for giving um, a space, um, trim. Okay, let me show you what trim is. So trim would be something like this. If you have a bunch of space, before and after, it's actually going to, uh, it does take a parenthesis too. So if I save this, as you can see, 
there are no space. So it's actually going to trim the beginning, uh, you know, spaces that's uh, in the beginning, the, at the start and at the end. So it's really handy. So it's actually going to give you just the sentence. It's not going to do anything with the uh, spaces that's in between the uh, words, but it's going to trim the big uh, in the beginning and at the end. All right. So let's. Uh, that's the end of the string. Let's go ahead and learn about arrays that we talk about. Now, arrays is a J JavaScript data structure. So it's very useful because with arrays, so I can just say here cars equal to. So I'm creating a variable here named cars. And I can, I will open a, a square brackets. And now that square brackets actually, it's a notation. It's a, it's a saying to JavaScript that, hey, I'm about to create uh, an array with the square brackets. Yeah. So with this array, I can actually input multiple va uh, values or data types, store multiple values or data types into this one uh, array called car. So I can. Do, let's say and everything needs to be in a quotation if it's a single uh, if it's a string of course so I can do sub I can do Volvo and I can do uh, let's say BMW uh, BM, BMW so at this moment I have three string that I am storing within a car so and of course, arrays have some methods and uh, I can do something like this. Console.log. Now, if I want to, so I'm going to first put cars. So here, if I want to just get the first uh, sub, the sub, I can actually do this. I can, so uh, arrays are all um, zero based. And this is how they store their data types into an array in the memory is that is zero base. So the first string or the first data type will be stored in an index of zero. And then it's going to go from there. So zero, one, two. I let's say I just want to let's just console log this one and see that. Okay, this is an array and okay, so but I can get into uh, each individual one. And that's because I have some methods like a square bracket, and then just write, give the index of the array. And that will give you sub because sub is stored in the cars array into zero index, zero position. So if I do, let's say one, it's going to give me Volvo. If I do two, it's going to give me BMW. And even though you, it looks like the third name is BMW, again, arrays are zero based. So zero, one, two, so two would be BMW. Okay, now, uh, in array, you can also store uh, any data types, right? So you can store a string, you can also store number. It's just like this number you can store like this with the comma separator um, here you can see like this is going to be so I'm gonna do square bracket again and I'm gonna go to this is gonna be zero one two three so if I do three save I'm getting the number two okay all right so again I can do also um, arrays with an array so here I can actually create let me Make some space here so you can see better. So here I will do um, another array that's going to cause uh, is going to call a nested array. So here I can actually create another array of that fruits, which is going to be again within quotation apple banana. and kiwi if i save this now you can see i stored uh, strings i stored uh, numbers and now i am storing another array within an array so how to get get to this particular array now so first i have to get to this array position which is this is sub is zero one two three four so this array is at number five position so if i do something like this instead of three five, it's actually going to give me this nested array. Okay, but it's going to give me all of them. But what if if I want to get into even uh, this 
particular uh, array and get only banana. So I can chain another bracket. And then so this bracket actually means that go into this bracket, this array at number five, and get the position, which is going to be uh, so it's a zero base or so zero one, so it's going to be one. So if I save right here, it's going to give me banana. So now you can see you can do nest arrays and then you can just chain a square bracket after a square bracket to get deeper and deeper and deeper another thing you can do is also you can create uh, objects which we will talk about um, after arrays object is like a key um, value uh, pairs uh, data structure so you can store uh, data structure as well through that okay now this is a basic understanding of arrays now arrays like strings also have some methods so we're going to do that we're going to invoke some method from this of uh, arrays of strings numbers and some fruits that we created and see if we can get um uh can, can manipulate this okay so cars the first method i'm going to show you is called uh so in to invoke a method obviously i'm going to do like a dot notation that means i'm hey go in this cars variable and then i'm going to invoke pop and then pop will take a, a parenthesis here and save and now it is you can see it is going to give you just the last index just the last input in this array so cars.pop is actually popping out the very last element from the array and it's going to give you that okay so it's console logging cars.pop now here now if i do cars you can see everything is as is it's good but with the cars.pop is going to give you give me the last element right here last element which is an array all right now i can do something else i can and now um push so instead of going into the array and actually hard coding something i can push because this array is in real a real world could be like a massive right um saved in a database or something like that maybe you just know that there is an array called cars now you want to add something uh in that um array so i can again do dot go in there and I can do uh, something like this, push. So push is going to push another element into this array at the end, okay? So push, I have to do, let's say, if I wanna do a string, I can do strings, I'm gonna say last element if I save this. Now if I do cars, so it's gonna give me the length of seven, so zero, one, two, three, four, five, uh, one two three four five six seven because length is always like regular one two one two three and then arrays is our zero based so uh, you can see now cars actually has this last element so it is in there i can do another array as well so i can do let's say microsoft and that's definitely needs to be a string uh let's say i'm gonna say google I'm going to say, um, let's say Facebook. And if I save this, now you can see the last element would be Microsoft, Google, Facebook. So that's how you will push an element or uh, any data type into the uh, cars array. Okay. Now, what if you want to add something let's say at the beginning. So it is automatically going to add it uh, at the end, but what if you want to add something at the beginning at the zero index? So you can do something like this. You can do uh, unshift uh, parentheses. Again, let's say I want to add uh, Toyota. And then now you can see that I can add Toyota at the beginning of the array. So with push, I can add it at the end. With unshift, I can add it at the beginning of an array. Now also, since we learned about pop, so if I do pop right now, save, it's going to, well, it's going to pop out this apple banana queue, the uh, kiwi, the last element, and then you can see that I am also logging the cars. Right now the cars don't have that apple banana and kiwi anymore. 
Okay, so I can do this. This pop will take out the last element. I can do something shift save, which will pop out the first element, which is sub right here. And as you can see here, the uh, cars arrays is now does not have the volo is a zero index right now. All right, so these are some of the array methods because I wanted to get the index, the position number of Apple. Now, Apple is is an array within another array. So I have to get to that array by saying cars and then go to the array. So that position is five and then invoke this index of Apple. And so it's giving me Apple is at zero position. Now, if I want to, let's say, just do uh, on cars and then just give sub here, save. It's going to give me another zero because sub is also at a zero position. If I do uh, Volvo save, it's going to give me that position number on one. So that's what index of does for us. Uh, we also can do, let's say, length just like uh, uh, string here and it, it will give me uh, six so there's six items in there so one two three four five six six items six data types in the array all right another thing uh, about arrays I want to show you guys today is uh, so let's say I am creating a string so I'm gonna say const text equals to uh, this is a string okay now here if I console log this one so text if I save this you see that the string is logging on the console for me now string is uh, something called immutable uh, it's not mutable so when I say mutable it means that it uh, it's changeable right so I cannot mutate this string means I cannot change this string I can reassign them so if I change this const to let because you know we know that we cannot uh, reassign a const variable because it's a constant uh, we can do, I can do something like this uh, changed uh, text now if I save this one you can see now console log text is now logging change text all right so I can reassign a string but I cannot change the string itself but with uh, I'm gonna get rid of console log here but with arrays though so let's create an array the same array that we created before which is cars I'm gonna give them some value here uh, so it's going to be sub for the first car uh, Volvo, Volvo for the second and then BMW for the third now here I'm gonna say console.log cars if I save this uh, you can see the array is logging in the console all right, but here, one important thing is that I'm gonna keep this const. Uh, I'm not gonna change this uh, to let because constant um, cars, I'm not reassigning anything, but I can change, I can mutate each value here by simply saying cars and I, I know, let's say I wanna change this sub. Okay, so I know which index because we know arrays are zero base, right? So sub right now, the first value is at zero. Here, I can reassign it or change the value itself to a new item. So I'm going to say Toyota. And now if I save this, you can see on the console log, we have Toyota, Volvo, BMW. And now it is changed. The array itself, uh, sub is not in there anymore. It changed. So this is why array is mutable. Strings is not. And with const, you cannot reassign them, but you can change them. So this is... Uh, <clears throat> we will use a lot uh, is that you can create like a const cars equals to like a, an empty array and then based on whatever we we want to do in our code we can push some data or values into that array thing so let's go ahead and uh, work on objects so objects are like this so i will say const i'm gonna say it's gonna be um a key key value pairs is going to be key value there so i'm going to be i'm going to use person and i'm going to use object so i'm going to uh, and it has to be the first name right first name so after this i can just do comma and then ha add last name and i get to do camel case here i forgot all right so here last name let's say is last name would be doe 
So it's actually going to give me an object. Now to get the first name, I can uh, in object, I will have to just do dot notation and get the first name. And if I save this, it's going to give me John. Uh, if I do last name, save, that's because I, okay, there we go. Last name is going to give me Doe. If I have, um, again, like just like an array, I can have um, objects inside an object. So I can have another object right here and I can just say, uh, in fact, this one will be address colon and then other objects here. The address would be like street name and that would be like 50th main. And of course, it's going to give me an error because I did not use um, quotation. So it's going to street, um, let's say road number would be um, another string d block all right so save this um, uh, that's because it is giving me an error that's because i did not add uh, a comma here so every uh, entry needs to be comma separated. So right now I have an uh, object that is a person and this particular person has a key value. So I can have like first name, John, last name, Doe, address is address is another object within an object. So how can I get this uh, street name out of this? So we already name how to get um, uh, the name Doe, the value of this just by uh, doing like dot and then last name. So here, what I have to do is I have to go in, in and then get the address. So I'll have to say address. Then I have to go inside of that address. So another dot, not here. So if I do write that right now here, so it's going to give me that object. So I have to go inside of that object, right? So this is a nested object. So I have to do dot. And then let's say I want to do street name. So if I do that, and that's because this, if I save this, you can look at this. Now it is going to give me 50th main shrift. Okay, so that's how you go. So with an array, because it's a square bracket, I will I will use a square bracket array and then you know, index position. Uh, here in person address, we will use the key because it's a key, a key value pair and then get into like get, go into deeper and deeper with the dot notation. Now let's talk about loops. I want to show you uh, what is uh, the definition of loop. So in computer science, a loop is a programming structure that repeats a sequence of instructions until a specific condition is met. You'll be using loop uh, a lot. So basically, I'm going to clear this console log for you. And I'm going to create, uh, let's say an array of posts. So like a social media post, so I'm going to say post, I'm going to uh, do like a plural here post because it will have an empty array and then it will have several objects of singular post. So the first one will be an object, it will have a title and it's going to be a string, I'm going to say post number, uh, post, let's say post number one. And then uh, next one will be text. So what is the post is about? I'm going to say post. Um, this is post one and comma. I'm going to I'm going to do uh, create it at and this one is going to be I'm going to create a new instance of a date object. Now, what is a data object? This is a class. This is a cop object that we'll learn more about uh, when we're going to talk about our class. But just know that this new date object with the new keyword, we are um, creating a new instance from this date object. It's actually going to give me um, like what's the date, time and everything when we'll, we will look into it. Okay, so this is our first object right here. This is the first post. So it has a title. It has a text. I'm going to create another object here. And I want to just copy paste this two more times. And here, I'm going to change this one to two. And here, I'm going to change this one to three. So I got three posts. So if I save this, I got three posts. Let's me console log this one to uh, in the console here. And you can see I have an array and each index zero, one, two, I have three objects. Okay.
All right, for the loop here, um, well, before I do this, let's say I want a console. Let's clear uh, clear this console here. And at this point, I want to see what this new date gives me. So how can I do that? Let's say I want to get this created at new date from the uh, post number one post. All right. So as you can, uh, as you know already that we can get this uh, object here uh, is first, I know that this is a zero index. So I'm going to open up a uh, square bracket, put zero, that means this is the index here, and then dot, because I know this is an object, so I'm, I wanna go in the object, and here I'm gonna just simply say created at. And if I save this, you can see this new date object uh, is actually giving me Wednesday, March 31st, the time, GMT, Eastern Daylight Time, all those sort of things, like exact time, what is right now here. All right, so let's go ahead and give this uh, another one. Let's say I want to do like text and you can see this is the post one. This is the text it's coming. Now, if I want to just uh, console log all the text from all the three posts right here, I have to do like I have to console log three times. I have to do like first zero, then first, then one, and then two. And if I save this, you see now from the post array, all the text appears on, on my console. But to do this, I have to do console log three times. And also these are all hard coded. What if, if I have like millions or thousands of uh, posts into this post array? I wouldn't, I wouldn't know the index. Also, I would have to do it like 1000 times console log. And that's not efficient. So to get rid of all this, there is something called loop. And loop is going to iterate from each um, item in this array. And I'll show you the first loop I'm going to show you. It's called a for loop. And it is uh, pretty ancient. Uh, uh, if you use uh, some other language, for loop is available, I believe, in Java too and other languages as well. Uh, so it's pretty ancient. So I'm going to show you like the ancient way of writing for loop and also the ES6, most uh, more modern syntax of the for loop. Okay. So to create a for loop, you'll say for loop and then open up parentheses. And then after the parentheses, you'll open up a curly brace. Okay. So what this means, this means it's for and then whenever you are um, creating a parentheses, it basically means either you are invoking a function, or you want to put some arguments or parameters. So basically, what I'm going to do inside for loop, I will put some input, it will take some input in the parentheses. And then it will do something here in the code block, which is the curly braces in the curly braces is all the actions that happens with the input that I'm actually going to give in the parentheses. Okay. Now in the for loop, the syntax might look a little bit confusing, but I'm going to explain this one step by step. The first one I'm going to, I'm going to go ahead and do uh, is let me give you the basics. So I want to iterate through each object in the post array. And I can do this by going through their index, right? I can just, because I know this is zero. Uh, I know this is one, I know this is two. So I can just loop through, I can just go like from zero, one, two, then if I have more, I can say like three, four, five, so four. So to do that, first, I'm going to create, I'm going to give myself a variable, I'm going to say let I and I'm going to give the name of this variable I. And I'm going to assign this one to zero. Okay, now I'm going to end this with semicolon here. And now this n is in my mind, the n is denotes the index because I want to start from zero, then go one, two, three, four. So first, let me give myself a variable. And then after this, let i equals to zero, I want to set a condition, because I want to stop at some point because I don't want to go just zero, one, two, three, four, five, six. I have to stop this. Uh, remember, computer only understand binary codes, right? One and zero. Uh, so computer are not for the low level basic understanding. Computers are not that very smart. We have to give very specific instruction for computer to execute that function or whatever we are trying to do. Okay, so we have to limit them. Otherwise, it won't stop. It won't know computer are not smart enough to just automatically catch this and then uh, stop. So that's why I have to give a condition if you 
uh, look at the definition one more time here is a loop is a programming structure that re repeats a sequence of instructions until a specific condition is met and this is the condition that I'm going to put I'm gonna say first I equal to zero so that's my index as long as this is less than the length of this array I want to stop right and I know how to get this length uh, we learned it before we're just gonna say post dot length and semicolon. Okay, so this is the condition that I am putting. Hey, start from zero because I know array is zero based. I can also do this like one as well, but I'll uh, I'll show you what uh, what I have to change here if I want to do one. So let i equals to zero is going to start from zero, and then as long as i is less than the post dot length do something it's going to do something here now post dot length is going to give me three items right it's going to give me three because post dot length always uh, counts as we normally do we uh, start from one two three okay so if i'm starting from zero and then so it's going to be zero then it's going to go to one and then it's going to go to two and it's not going to include number three here because it is if it includes number three it has to be equal it has to be less than three so that's why we start from zero and then less than post dot length if you don't want to start from zero let's say you want to start from one that means you have to do one and then two and then three now this condition is not meeting at three because you are saying less than so it's going to stop at somewhere at the two one two and then he's going to say three oh three is less than three is not less than two so it's going to stop at two so if you want to use one you have to use equal that way it is also going to include the number three so you can say uh, i equals to one one two and then say three three is not less than two but it is equal okay so post dot length all right so i'm going to go back to zero here and then do less than post dot length okay now at this point of time this is what's going to happen it's going to create an i equals to zero and it's going to say okay condition is that i equals to zero zero is less than three i'm going to do something then he's going to go back again and he's going to say okay i have i equals to zero again so I obviously zero is less than three is going to do again so it's going to create something called infinite loop because zero is always going to be less than post dot length so in order to for the limit our loop here at the end i'm going to do something else i'm going to do like this i i'm going to increment to one otherwise it's going to just keep logging this first text okay um it's not going to go it's not going to increase uh, increase because i'm trying to get this text from each position here i if i is zero is going to stuck at the zero position so at this here i will do i will reassign this i and that's why i created this let instead of const uh equal to whatever i is right now plus one okay and here do something i'm gonna just do like console.log here I'm gonna do the same thing just like I did it previously what I did let me just put this again so I did uh, post uh, square bracket and then zero dot text and it uh, logged my text on the console here I'm gonna do the exact same thing post square bracket instead of zero though instead of hard coding zero because i have a position here and this is dynamic so i'm gonna put i here so i'm gonna get rid of this the first line and here i'm first this is what's happening right now so i'm, I'm creating i and then initializing it with zero and it is showing it is going to the condition here okay zero is less than um the post dot length which is three all right so i'm gonna go ahead and uh, log this and it is going to be post dot i at this point i is zero right dot text is going to log this text right here and then it's going to go back and before it goes back it's going to look at this code at the end code right here because at this point i is no longer zero because i added one to it at this point because it, it's going to execute this one and i will become one and then it's again check this condition is one less than three yes it is so it's going to do again another console log but this time i will be one instead of zero which will denote this one and all right so here 
So post and then one uh, I and then at the end is going to say it is two and then is two is less than three. Yes, it is. And then it's going to do the two this one and then it's going to upgrade itself to three and then it will say I is three less than three. No, it's not. And that at that point is going to stop. All right. So let's see what happens. Save. There you go. It is now with this code right here, instead of uh, writing console log three times, I am printing all the text here um, with just this code. Okay. Now this line right here that I equals I plus one, there is a better way, short way to write this. So I did this one, right? I plus one. Okay. I can also do something like this plus equals one. This means exactly the same thing. I plus equals one means I just add one to I. There's even another short way to write and which I'm going to show you is you just simply say I plus plus that will do exact same thing. It will increment by one. Okay, this is something it's called syntactic sugar. It doesn't do functionally anything different, but it, it's shorter, it looks good. So I plus plus now if I save this, you see that we are getting the same exact result. Instead of post I text, let's do title. And if I save this, you see right now I'm getting the title. Okay, with this for loop, I don't have to write console log three more thousand times. Even if I have like a thousand posts right here, I could just get all the text or all the titles with this simple code right here. I don't have to do anything. So that's the benefit of looping. All right. So this is, if this, you will see a lot of code when, when you're going to write um, a read code uh, like this, and you can use this code. It's, it's pretty ancient code. Um, but there is also like a very modern and easy way to write for loop. And this is something uh, coming in ES6. And this is called for off loop. So I'm going to go ahead and comment this out. And here is the same thing. We're going we're gonna to do four parentheses. And then I'm going to open up curly braces. And in within this parentheses, instead of writing all this, I variable condition I plus plus, I can just simply say, I can create a variable here, I'm going to just say post this could be anything because this is a variable. Uh, I'm just saying, but usually this is what I do, I have an array with a lot of posts. So this is going to be my plural. So post and each one will be post. So I'm going to say post off, off is the main instrument here for the for loop for off loop, this is called post off posts. So basically, I'm saying for each post of this array post, this is an actual array. This is I can name this whatever I want. And then this is the loop for off. So for post, which is this one of this array post. And here I can do the same exact thing console.log. Now I can just say post dot immediately go into each post with this dot notation. I don't even have to do the square bracket, do I or whatever, nothing, nothing like that. I can just simply here and say text. If I save this, you see I'm getting the same exact result. And I can just do title, I, I'm getting the same thing if um, with this. Alright, so this is called for loop. All right, this is the be much better way, much better syntax uh, to use. All right, I'm going to go ahead and uh, comment this one as well. Uh, next up, I'm going to show you something called a while loop. And while loop is is pretty ancient as well. So same thing while it parentheses and then curly braces. And in while loop, what you have to do is that in the for loop, we created the variable I inside of this parentheses here, I'm going to create it outside of the while loop. And here, um, let I equals to zero while uh, this is going to just take the condition. So I is less than post dot length. And here do do this, what do you want to do? Uh, you want to do console dot log. Um, and that's going to be post. 
and it's, it's gonna it's gonna do the same exact thing. In fact, I can just uh, copy this and paste it right here. Uh, too many C's, uh, right here. But at this point, always remember, a loop can lead to an infinite loop if you are not incrementing this one. So you definitely have to increment this one because right here, I'm creating the variable. This is this is this part. I'm also uh, mentioning uh, the condition, which is this part, but this one is left. So after all this, like after consoling, console logging this one, Uh, just increment this i by one. So if I save this now, you see I'm getting the exact same result. So uh, I can just do text, save, I'm getting the text. So this is called a while loop. All right, so now it's time for learn some if else statement. And if else statement are pretty simple, like it it basically reads, uh, if a certain condition is met, do something. If it doesn't met, do something else. So this is how you write an if else statement. So you will say if, and then open up parentheses, and then open up some curly braces. This parentheses, I'm going to put a condition that I'm gonna check. Okay, if this condition is true, here, do something. Else, I can just say else, and this not take any input at all because um, uh, there's no point to put in uh, anything. I'm just basically saying, hey, if the condition is met, do this. And if it doesn't met, just do other things. So I don't have to take any other input here. So here I'll just say, um, do something else. All right. So this is how it works. Let me give you an example. Let's say const, I'm going to create a variable called a number and give it a number of two. All right. So here I can uh, give it a condition. If I say that, hey, number, if number is equal to number two, and notice that I'm using uh, triple equals. Uh, with triple equals, it compares data type and the value itself. Uh, so it's going to give me um, Boolean value. It's going to give me a true. So this condition is true because this is two, right? So it's going to run this code right here. So what I want to run, I'm going to say console.log. Here, I am going to say number is two. And else, I also want to mention what else it should do if it's not two. I'm going to say console.log, uh, another a string. I'm going to say number is not two. So if I save this, you can see I am getting number is two because indeed it is two. Now, if I change this to, let's say three, safe, it is going to give me this uh, code right here under else, number is not two. So you can do if else statement to uh, evaluate a condition. If a certain condition is true, you, this is the first block, if block is gonna execute. If, if that condition is not true, the else block will execute. Now you might be asking, what if I have multiple conditions, right? So with multiple conditions, you can do something like this. You can actually chain uh, else if. So it is also going to take another parentheses and uh, curly braces. So else if, else if basically means that you can tack on other conditions as well. So let's say if instead of number equals to three, I will do like uh, if number is less than two, else if number is greater than two and console log something console.log i'm gonna say number is greater than two and here let me just check if my if else statement makes sense so i'm first saying if number is less than two console log number is i'm gonna just modify this less than two Else if number is more than two, console log number is greater than two, obviously three is greater than two, else console log number is not two, or number is equal to two. Let's just do that because, so right now, if I save this, you can see that it is clearly saying number is greater than two because three number is greater than two. So it went to this block right here, uh, first if statement, uh, and then it checked whether number is less than two and it checked, no, it's not. So I'm not gonna run this. Then it goes to the next block of code, which is else if, 
And then again, it verifies evaluate to a Boolean value, true or false. Now is number greater than two? And it is, see, it is seeing three and it's saying, yes, it is actually greater than three. So I'm going to run this block of code. So it actually don't even go to this else statement at all. Okay, now if I put this one here uh, two, then uh, the first block of code, if checks, if number is less than two, two is not less than two, so not gonna run. Else if is number greater than two, two is not greater than two also, so not gonna run this one. But else, any, anything else could happen, it gonna be number is equal to two. So if I save this right now, it's gonna say number is equal to two, and it goes to this uh, else statement, okay? You can also add multiple conditions uh, with another if as well. So if I click on here, you're gonna see the same exa exact result. The difference between two if statement and a else if is that with just two if, it's gonna check if the first condition met, run this block or not. And then also this one, regardless of this one true or false, both if statement are gonna run. But if you, put else if, that then it's a part of this if. So in that case, if this is like, let's say if I do like one, and this condition is met, it's never going to run this else if, because else if is a part of this if. So that's the difference between else if and tack on a to if statement. And also you do not have to have this else state statement. You can just have just one single if statement. Like I can just do something like this. If uh, number is less than two, um, just print something. Let's just say console.log uh, uh, something, all right? And it prints something. So you don't really need else if, you don't really need another else. It's, it's gonna work just fine. Okay, so this is a very simple example for you to um, work with if else statement. Now here, what if you have a lot of cases, okay? Um, let's say instead of this const number, let's say I'm gonna do like an instead of instance of the new date and you, you saw this example before and from the new date, as you know, the date is a new, with a new keyword, I'm getting an instance of the date and that date gives me the current date right now. From that date, I can actually get another method that's called get day. With that day, it's actually going to give me a number that corresponds to each day of the week. So right now, if I console log number and save this, you see that it is actually giving me number three. And a number three corresponds to Wednesday. Uh, number one is going to be uh, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, okay? Three, uh, one, two, three. All right, so let's do this. Let's have, uh, let's create uh, multiple cases or conditions that it could result in. It could be like one, two, three, right? We have seven days. It could, so zero is Sunday. So one, two, three, four, five, six, and then zero. Okay, in order to represent, in order to write a code that would represent all the days, I have to write a lot of if else statements. So like this, I'm gonna go ahead and try to do this. So if number, I'm gonna say if number is, let's say zero, I'm gonna start with uh, Sunday, uh, console.log happy Sunday. Okay, I have to write a lot of other, in e, for each cases, I have to write this else if now. If number is equal to now one, that would be Monday. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy this one right here. And instead of this, I'm gonna say Monday. All right, and I gotta do another one. Let's say I gotta do another one uh, here. And that's gonna be for two, and that's gonna be for Tuesday. And then at the end, I will just say console.log. So I didn't write everything, but you get the points, like zero, one, two, and then three, four, five, six, all this. And then after else, like after writing all, this, uh, all the five, uh, all the week, just one day left, I can just have something like this, looking for to weekend, right? If I save this, you see that it is going to give me 
looking forward to weekend because I don't have the number three here. Um, so if I just, let's say, if I do three and change this to Wednesday, save, it's gonna give me a happy Wednesday because it is actually number three. Okay, so instead of writing all this if, else, if, else, if, else, there's a better way to write this um, if you have multiple conditions than usual, which is using with a switch statement. So I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna cut this and number, uh, I'm gonna keep this and I'm gonna write switch, switch statement. Switch statement also takes a parenthesis and this parenthesis will have the condition that I'm gonna check. Okay, so right now it is gonna take just a number, okay? And then open up uh, curly braces and here I will check for each case. So this number, if this number I will say case, each condition will be case, space, what this number could be. This number could be from zero to six, right? Zero, one, two, three, four, five, six. So instead of, I can say, uh, I will start with one, case one, colon, uh, then console log, and it's gonna be Monday, so happy Monday. And then I wanna break this, because I don't want anything to happen anymore. I don't want it to uh, evaluate any more case. If it's the one, and I have one, just console log this, don't go to case two, just break it, okay? And I can just have another one, case two, if it's two, then I'll just do the same thing, I'll copy, paste, um, and here is actually gonna be Tuesday, I wanna make this M bigger, um, and then finally I'll have, um, case that's four three and that's gonna be it is Wednesday and then break and here the else statement in the if else is actually here is gonna call as default so default it's not gonna take any cases just a straight up colon and here I will say console log looking forward to weekend. So if I save this, it's going to give me happy Wednesday, okay, because it's always going to give me three. If I hard code this number instead of three, if I hard code this number one, it's going to give me happy Monday. If I do it two, it's going to give me happy Tuesday. And then if I do it three, it's going to give me happy Wednesday. If I do something else, it's going to give me looking for forward to weekend. So if I have multiple condition, instead of writing a uh, long winded if else statement or else if statement, uh, I can just uh, simply write it this way uh, with a switch statement. So that is what switch, okay? All right, now I'm gonna keep this const. I'm gonna get rid of this switch statement. I wanna show you what's called a ternary operator. A ternary operator, when you have just one condition you are checking, whether it's true or false, uh, based on it's true or false, you wanna show or you wanna, uh, uh, let's say, execute some code instead of writing like this, so let's say if, um, let's say number is less than two, uh, console.log, um, let's say I can say uh, something, right? And just something. And then else console log, something else. Uh, so if I save this, it's gonna always do something else because four is not less than. So this is, instead of writing this, I can write all this in a single line. And I'm gonna show you how I can do this. I'm gonna comment this one just for reference. Here, I'm gonna create uh, a variable called result and equal just to console log this uh, later. That's why I'm putting this on a variable. I don't have to put this in a variable, but that's just for ease of use. So here, I can actually check number. So I'll open up parentheses. Now again, this parenthesis is optional. I can just simply do like this. So I'm gonna put the condition here. The condition that I'm trying to check is this one, if two, okay? And then, I'm gonna do like a question mark. This question mark will evaluate this condition, whether it's true or false, just like this if else statement does, okay? I'm doing the exact same thing. So without parentheses, it's gonna work, 
but I like to use parentheses. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to add a parentheses. So if number is less than two, if that's true, then do something here. So I'm going to just say, I'm going to just put this something and then colon. And then on the second one is going to be the else statement. So if it's true, if this number is less than two evaluates to true, do this. Or if it's false, do the other thing, which is going to be something else. Okay. And now, let's see. Yeah, I have to go. Uh, and now, if I console dot log result save, you'll see I have the exact uh, same result. Now, if I do, let's say, if I change this one to one save, I will say I will get something, which is this one right here. All right. So that's called a ternary operator where instead of writing all this if else statement, I can if I if I'm only checking one single condition, if it's true or false, I can write it in this fashion ternary operator on a single line. The first one will be the condition, it could be in parentheses, uh, it's up to you. Uh, and then question mark is basically saying that, hey, uh, I'm about to do like, evaluate whether it's true or false. And then if it's true, do this, and then colon, if it's false, do the second one, do the last one. Okay, so that is your if else statement, uh, your switch statement, and your ternary operator. I'm going to go back to our table of contents here, and then see, okay, so we have functions, let's talk about functions. Now, I'm going to clear the console log right here and functions. So what are functions functions are a set of instructions that you create, uh, and give it to your computer to do certain action. Okay, simple as this, you're just you're just cre creating some instructions for your computer, and uh, the computer will act on it. So the first thing, there are several ways you can create a functions. The first one is obviously with the keyword function. That's the keyword function in JavaScript. So basically, I'm telling the JavaScript, hey, I'm up, about to create a function or an action instruction for you. And then space, I can give this a name, what's going to be my name of the function, I'm going to call this function greeting. Okay. And again, I'm going to open up parentheses and open up curly braces. Now, as I said before, this parentheses is going to be take for uh, taking inputs. Uh, in this case, it could be arg uh, arguments or parameters. And here, it's going to give you some output. Okay, taking some input giving you some output. It's not 100% necessary all the time, you can just omit the input if you don't need it. But if you need to use some variable, then you can uh, variable use if you want to make a function dynamic, then you will put some input here. And you will see in action in a moment. So this is a function, okay, this is the name. And then I am creating a parentheses to get input. And then it's going to do some output. Okay, now, why I'm putting a name in there in the function. And that's because I want to I want to call this function somewhere else. Because just because you I am creating this function does does not mean it's going to be executable right away. It needs to execute I have to tell my computer this this time, you need to uh, turn on my uh, function. So how do I turn on the function? Simply just giving the name. So this is the function name, and here and then basically saying, this parentheses is invoking with this parentheses, I'm saying this is a kind of like kind of like a turn on switch, turn on my function, okay, invoking the function. All right, save, nothing happens because I did not log anything into console. All right, let's take a look how this works. I'm going to take, let's just uh, console log something else. Let's uh, output will be let's say console dot log, and just a string, I'm going to say hello world. All right, save this. Now you see that it's immediately logged it on the console here. If I don't have this, like if I save this, it's not going to do anything, because I have to turn on this function, I have to call this function. So I have to say greeting, and then turn on with the uh, parentheses, save, there you go. Hello world. Okay, if I want to make this a little bit dynamic, I can actually use something called a variable here instead of world. And I'm going to change this one. Uh, instead of quotation, I'm going to change this to backticks. And here instead of uh, world, I'm going to use the variable that I just create. So dollar sign curly braces, and name, 
Here, if I save this, it's gonna say hello undefined because this name is right now undefined. It is working as a variable for me and I have to give a value to it. And when I'm calling the function like greeting and open up this parentheses, I can specify what value this name should get. So here I'm just gonna say w3 tsa def. So if I save this now, you will see now it is dynamic. It is actually taking whatever input I'm giving. It is logging hello w3 tsa def. Okay, so this is an example of a function that takes a variable, a uh, parameter, argument, whatever you, you want to give it. And then when you call the greeting, you can pass in the uh, pass in the input. Okay. Another one is that is gonna, you will also see return. What return does is basically it takes some input. Okay, if you give it, and then it returns a value, it actually hand out a value to you. So this is what return return should always come at the end because it's actually end the function for you. All right. So if I do instead of console log right here, if I do return uh, backtick, hello, I'm going to do the same thing here. Name, save it It's not going to do it on the console log, because I have to now console log it from here. Now is going to give me that. So right now is just returning a value instead of logging the console, it's just giving giving me the value with the string hello name. Okay, that's what return is in the function. Alright, so this function has a name, it's a greeting uh, name. And then that's how I call it. There's another way I can create a function without a name and that would be called anonymous. Okay, because it does not have a name. So I'm going to go ahead and comment this one. And right here, I'm going to create let's say result, okay, a variable. And in this variable, I'll have the function, I'm going to create the function keyword, and not going to give it a name, I'm going to open parentheses, and I'm going to open a curly braces. Okay, so this type of function, which does not have a name called anonymous function, and I can do the exact same thing, I can exactly do this return hello name and this name is showing me that it's not valid in VS code. So we'll go ahead and give this name in here. It works exactly the same way. And then I'm going to do console log result. And then if I save this, you see what happens. Now result is actually uh, returning my function because I did not give any input. So I have to open up parentheses and give the same input that I gave it before. So save. Now it is working. So this type of function, which does not have any name, is called anonymous function. All right. So there's another way I can create this anonymous function. And that's called arrow function or a fat arrow function. Instead of like I can omit the whole keyword right here. And I will just keep the parentheses. And here I will uh, kind of write a arrow, which is equal and then greater than sign, it looks like an arrow function. So that's why it's called an arrow function, you can omit the name as well. And that's why like a, uh, that's why it's called like a fat arrow function sometimes. But this is what arrow function is, it works exactly the same way. Okay, and this is also uh, work also known as anonymous function. All right, another um, function I want to show you is that is called if -E. so I I F E. Basically, it means immediately invoked function expression. And um, this is what we're going to do. So we saw the function when you create a function, you need to call that function in order for it to execute. So immediately invoke function is that you don't have to call it, you can immediately invoke the function when you write the function. Okay, so for an example, you want something like you don't want to pass uh, a function name into any other functions or anything like that. You just want a function to invoke every time the page renders right or page loads. So to do that, what you have to do is you have to open a parentheses and within this parentheses, you have to create the function. And let's say I'm going to create the same function here greeting, I'm not going to uh, go ahead and do nothing, no argument or parameter here. And it's going to simply console dot uh, log uh, string here is going to say hello world. Okay. 
Now, here I have to emit. So if I save this, nothing happens. It doesn't console log because uh, it's not, uh, I did not invoke it. So I can just simply have another parenthesis at the end of it and then semicolon. If I save this, now it gets immediately invoked without calling this function by just adding this parenthesis at the end of this function right here. So this type of function is called iffy. Also remember, you can call function in uh, another function, uh, uh, another function code block. All right, so you'll be creating a lot of functions when working with JavaScript or any any uh, programming language at all because these are uh, instructions that you create if you want your website to behave certain way, if you want your application to certain uh, behave certain way. These are this is the way you you are creating your instructions. So functions are really really important concept to grasp. Okay. All right, so after functions, I'm actually going to give you higher order function. We're going to talk about higher order functions are pretty similar, uh, like for off functions, like we uh, show you before. So first, I am going to give me uh, an array, an array of object first here. I'm going to let me just go ahead and copy paste this one. So right here, I have a person array. Okay, and in that array, I have different type, different persons here. Okay, each person, and it's in in the object. So the first higher order function I want to show you is called uh, for each. So I can do for persons dot for each, and then in in the parentheses, in the parentheses I will open up another parentheses, and that's called person because that's uh, singular, uh, and then pl plural. You can call it anything you want, but I like to keep it singular and plural. So plural will be like a collection of persons and then it will uh, iterate through each item, which is right now here is a person. Then it is, I'm basically creating an arrow function right here, okay? So persons are for each, and then I'm creating an arrow function as we talked about before. And here I wanna do something like console log. I wanna console log. Uh, what I wanna console log, I wanna console log person dot first name. And let's, let me put this all, let me cut this uh, back tick. And then as a variable, let me put this like right here. And then also, let me put this instead of first name, I'm going to say last name. So if I save it right now, you can see that it is actually uh, console logging the full name, okay, uh, from each person, John Doe, Jane Doe, and Sean Doe. So you can do this with person. Person can also take another parameter, and that is called index. So you can actually do something with the index as well. So I'm not going to spend too much time on this higher order function because it's kind of advanced topic, but these are really, really good uh, use of it. You just have to uh, look into MDN and do some practice, but I'm going to give you like a brief example of what these functions are, okay? Another functions that we want to talk about, I'm going to comment this one right here, is called a map. So map will actually give you not only the value itself, it's not gonna, not only console logging the value, it's also going to give you in an array. So for that, I'm gonna put this on a result variable equals, and then I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna do persons, that's my array here, okay? And I'm gonna call map, and I'm gonna say, uh, again, parentheses, and in that parentheses, I'm gonna create another parentheses, is gonna give me the same thing, each person I want to iterate through, and I'm creating an arrow function right here, open up curly braces. Here, I'm gonna return something. I'm gonna return the same thing that I return here. So I'm gonna return the full name here instead of console logging directly in, in here. And then at the end, I'm gonna go ahead and console.log result, save. You will see now the full name uh, it is showing up in an array instead of like uh, as a string that you saw in the for each. Map is a pretty uh, uh, popular function, higher order function, and it's pretty powerful. You'll be using map, uh, usually, especially if you're working with React and stuff, you will use uh, map a lot, okay? Now, I wanna show you one more thing here. I do like to write my uh, code kind of verbals with all the like person with parentheses, arrow function, curly brace and everything. But if you have just one single line uh, executable code, you can omit a lot of stuff. You can make this shorter. So you can take off this parentheses, okay? You can take off this curly braces completely. And then you also can just take off the return statement as well. And this will as work same way. 
Okay, so if you like to, you can do something like this. Like, I'm gonna take this here. So it's in just one line. If you have just one line, one uh, return statement, you can do something like this. I like to do it verbose like this one. Um, it's just my preference. It's more readable to me, uh, but it's up to you. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and comment this one again. So we learn about for each, we learn about map. Uh, let's learn about filter. Now filter is if you wanna filter out some information out of this array. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing here. I'm gonna do const result. In fact, I'm gonna say const filtered result equals to, and I'm gonna have persons get that array, and I'm gonna say filter. I wanna invoke a filter hierarchy function. Same thing, I'm gonna get this uh, for each person, and then I'm gonna create an arrow function out of this, and here I'm gonna return I'm gonna do not return. I'm actually gonna do an if check. If I'm uh, what I want is that if the first name is equal to John, so I'm gonna say if person dot first name is equal to John, return person. Okay, and then I'll console dot log. Uh, this one filtered result and then if I save this you see that I only have one uh, item in that array and that is for John so I can filter things out if I want a certain person name or certain item from a from a whole list I can do that with the filter with just an if conditional statement I can do exactly the same thing without like let's say I want everybody but John I can do something like this I can just say if the person dot first name is not equal to John, return the person, if save, you can see now it actually going to give me the other two persons that are not John, okay? It's Jane and Sean Doe. Okay, so that is filter for you, okay? I'm gonna go ahead and comment this as well. All right, uh, so I've got for each map filter. The next stop I'm gonna show you is call uh, sort. Now sort, is let's say I want to sort this array in terms of older to younger okay so I can do const I'll say older to younger that's my variable here I'm gonna get the persons dot uh, this time I'm gonna sort so I'm gonna sort I, I want to order my array in a, in a way so in this case it's actually going to take two inputs it's gonna take a and B okay because it needs to com compare between two elements uh, It's gonna compare which one is actually less than other that that way it can order the array for me so I will say this create an arrow function and here I'm gonna say return uh, return a dot dob because it's going to be based on the year you can see that object actually has a date of birth okay 1988 and based on this year I want to order this list so I can say return a dot uh, date of birth minus b date of birth and now if I console log older to younger save give me an array and you can see now it is actually getting older to younger Sean is the older 1970 then John and then lastly Jane I can do this exactly this uh, other way I can just do younger to older I just have to change this B a save and it's gonna give me from younger to older so uh, Jane John and Sean all right so that's how you do sort uh, let's comment this out as well and then at the end uh, it is reduce time to reduce something so what I want to do is reduce is a very powerful function you have to understand um, what reduce does um, in order to use them uh, all the higher order function are very very powerful and very useful you just have to do more practice um, to get your head around okay so here I'm gonna say sum of uh, years 
I want to get all the years like 1970 plus 2000 plus 1988. What is the sum is going to be? So I can do that with persons dot reduce. So it's going to reduce the all these years to a single summation total. Uh, reduce will take again two inputs. Reduce will take two inputs. One is called accumulator. Okay, I'm going to shortly do like ACCU, A-C-C, and then uh, C-U-R-R, -R, that's going to be for the current value. Okay, and then arrow function, open up uh, curly braces. Uh, here, I want to initialize this accumulator to zero. This is basically a variable. I'm creating a variable, giving this a variable a zero a value, okay, initializing this. So this is the uh, argument, IQ, and then giving it a value zero. And I'm just keep adding the current value. So it's going to go iterate 1998, take that plus this plus this, okay. So I'm going to basically saying the same thing here, return ACC right now it is zero and then plus it whatever the current value here with DOB. Okay, take this amount, which is 1998 and add it to zero. Zero is the accumulator initial value added to the first person, then it accumulator becomes the first 19. Um, 88, then again, add 2000, then becomes whatever that plus and then add it to 1970. So that's how uh, it gets. So console log sum of years, and then if you save, that is the summation of all the years. Okay, I know it was a quick uh, overview of the higher order function. MDN is uh, done, um, uh, maintained by Mozilla Firefox. MDN is a pretty great uh, website to look for this, like get uh, the definition, what it does, all this. Uh, you can get a lot, uh, you can learn a lot more from the MDN about higher order functions. And let me know if, if this makes sense. And if you wanna, if you wanna know about more, um, I can make another video just with this higher order functions with maybe more examples. I can do that, but that's, that's all uh, for the higher order functions for you. Let me go ahead and delete all this. And then let me go back to my uh, slides. So we talked about functions, we talked about harder methods. Uh, we're gonna talk about class. So let's go ahead and create a class. Class is an object. So as you um, as you saw that we actually worked on an object that is called date, right? So this is an object that is available in JavaScript. So as you can see, it is, give you uh, like a function. This is a function available in um, in JavaScript engine, right? So in order to create a uh, class, why do you want to create a class? Um, it's kind of like that you construct a kind of a parent uh, object. For example, if you are creating a, a class, let's just create this a class of let's say person. And um, this is going to be an open um, curly braces. Now notice one thing immediately that this person I am starting with a capital letter. This is the convention that whenever you creating a class or a parent object that needs to be capital, uh, like a sentence case capitalized first letter. Here, I want to create something. So based on so what my purpose is, I want to create, let's say a person one equal to with a new key key keyword, I want to create an instance of this object. Now this particular object will need some uh, specification or characteristics. Okay, so let's build that. So how do I build that? I build that with constructor. So constructor will uh, get first name. And last name. So I'm creating creating a bigger object of a person. Okay, so and this person what this person should have this person should have a first name, uh, any person will should have a first name and a last name. Okay, and then I'm opening up uh, curly braces, and basically saying basically adding this keyword with this keyword basically means that this object right here. So this first name that's coming in is going to go and add it to this person. Okay, so I'm going to say first name equal to going to be first name that is coming from here. And then I'm going to also say this dot 
last name equal to last name. Uh, here, I can actually create a new person and give this a first name, let's say John, and then Doe. Save this, let's console log this. Now let's console log this person one. And if I save, you can see now it is console logging uh, this person right here. I'm console logging this person right here, but this person's first name and last name is coming from this um, kind of like a parent object. And uh, I already construct what it should be, what is should, uh, what the characteristic should be. The characteristic should be it will have a name, first name, and a last name. And thus, you see that in console log, you can see, and you can also see it's actually logging the, uh, the class object here as well, like a person. It's so a first name John, uh, last name Doe. You can see here something called proto. This is called prototype. If you look at here, you can see the constructor. This is a class person. I can see that. The argument, uh, caller, yeah, and the name is the person. Okay, it's a prototype class. It's an object. Uh, you can have. You can see a lot of stuff right here. Okay, so uh, you can actually create another person from this. Just creating another instance of this of this class. So I can just do person two equal to with a new key keyword and it will have the same same thing uh, but this time I'll have let's say uh, Jane Doe safe and if I do person two it will see it is now first name Jane and Jane Doe so this is coming from this particular class with a constructor Okay, I can do something else here as well. I can just do get. Um, so instead of person, let's create another one. Let's create a rectangle class. So I'm going to create a class that would be rectangle and open up curly braces. Uh, I want to construct this. How do I construct this? What, uh, what properties it will have? It will have, in the parentheses, it will have a width and a height. Okay, and then in that, uh, I will open up parentheses here, and I'm going to attach um, with the, this keyword. So this uh, height equals to going to be this height right here, and uh, semicolon. I'm going to also do this dot width equal to width as well. Okay, so I created this constructor. All right, so I can now um, create like const, let's say square equal to um, new uh, rectangle and give it a width, let's say 10 by 10. And uh, find now console log. Final console log square, save. You'll see that square now has a height of 10 and a width of 10, okay? All right, so I can also add some methods and functions in that class here. So I can add something called a getter function, okay? So getter function will have like a get and it will have an area function, so that area function will just return um, this dot cal uh, calc area function. Okay. Um, so where is this calc area function? I'm going to go ahead and create this. So this is actually going to be a method. So when you create a function inside of a class, that becomes a method. Okay. So this is the function that I I now need to create. Okay, so uh, I'm going to say calc area and the function will basically do return this dot height times this dot width. 
okay? So I am creating, so if I save this, so what I'm doing right here, I am creating this function that is ca calculate area. So I wanna find what is the area of the square, okay? And that will basically do what it's gonna do is it's gonna just multiply height with the width that coming from here, okay? That's the one that we're gonna give this. And then this is gonna be get area. So if I call this function, it's going to in return call this function because that's exactly what I'm doing here. So get area is return this dot calc area. Okay, so I can call function inside a function. So here, instead of doing square, I can actually do something like this. If I do const, again, in fact, I can actually do uh, exactly right here, square dot area, because that is this method, this method is coming from this get is available to me. So I can do this and then let's say save this. You will see now it is giving me an 100. The area of that square is now 100 because 10 times 10, uh, 100. If you don't wanna bother about this uh, getter function, you can directly pass this function right here and you, you are gonna get the exact result, okay? So class is mainly, you create like a parent class which will have the basic um, characteristic. Uh, for an example, like if you wanna create like a cat. Now cat could be like different breeds, different colors, but you wanna create a basic uh, formation of cat. Let's say a cat object could have like a four legs. Every cat will have four legs. Every cat will have like a one tail, two ears. So you the basic forms, common forms, you can add it to and make it a bigger object. And then you can add other stuff, just adding, uh, creating a new instance of that object, okay? So this is a very basic definition, <laughs> kind of like an explanation of what class is. And you can pass function to a class and uh, you can create um, uh, new instances from a class. So that's what we have been doing when we are actually working on uh, the date uh, object, date class. Uh, from that date class, we also get that method get um, get day. So get day is some, something like this one, calc area, okay? So like this, we have a get uh, function in, uh, in method in, uh, in the class, which in turn uh, call for this method. All right, so this is our class. Let's go back to our, um, I wanna go back to my table of contents. All right, so we did higher order function class, uh, global scope versus local scope of function. I wanna talk about this one, do something like this. So if, if you create a function and let's say uh, you create, in fact, let's do this. I wanna create for variable i. I'm gonna create a, a loop, a for loop, um, the old version. And then I wanna say const, let's create an array. I will just call this an array. Here I'll have uh, okay. All right, as long as this one is less than uh, array dot length, i plus plus, this needs to be all together. Okay, um, I'm gonna go ahead and do this one. Um, actually, I'm gonna create this function. I'm gonna call this calc and here, I'm going to have all this uh, in this function right here. And then I'm going to say console.log i, save. Uh, let's go back to the console log. Nothing happens because I have to call this function, okay? So if I do calc save, uh, you see now I am getting uh, console log the i is doing the 0, 1, 2, 3 because that's the index of this array right here. Now off under here, if I console log, again, console.log i. Now this one is, i is scope here, right? In, in this for loop. So I am outside in this for loop. And if I do console log i here, so if I save, you can see right now it's also giving me 
uh, the new I, which is four. Okay, I can access the variable I because once, like if I kind of comment this out, it's only going to do zero, one, two, three, and then it's gonna stop because it's gonna see the condition right here as long as it's less than array dot length. But the I is actually incremented to four and then it checks the condition. So if I now uncomment this, it's going to give me the number four, the, uh, the, new, the latest result uh, of the I. Now, because we use var keyword, I have access to that var key, uh, the I, the variable that I created outside of this for loop. So let's say if I just use let, and if I save this, you see I have a problem now. So with the var, what happens is that this variable is uh, kind of have like it's scoped to the nearest function, which is this one. So everything here is within that function. That's why I have access to this I variable everywhere in this function, even though I call it outside of this for, uh, for loop. Okay, but with let, I only have um, access to this I within this for loop and not to the function okay, the nearest code block. And that's why we don't want to use var, we always want to use const or let because that they are uh, scoped in their, uh, instead of like uh, next function, nearest function, but the nearest code. Because if you use var, anybody in your function or it, it, for any reason, you can actually reassign i because it's available, it's accessible. It might create a kind of like a gateway for you to introduce bug. All right, so that's actually I want to share with you in terms of like what's global scope and uh, versus local scope. So let will be local scope instead of global scope. All right, so let me go back to my table of contents now and examples, DOM manipulation and spread array. I'm gonna talk about spread array real quick. Spread array is something like this. So I'm gonna call, I'm gonna do another array just like this. I'm gonna say, it's gonna, I'm gonna name this array equals um, one, two, three, four, and then five. Okay, I have this array. Let me create another array, new array equals two. And then here, what I wanna do is I want to get everything that this array has inside of this array. And I can do that with something called spread array. So I will have to do three dots and then this variable right here and then comma. And then if I wanna add something, I can just add this one, six right here at the end. Okay, so if I save this and let's say console log this. Now, if I console log this new array, you will see right now the new array not, uh, has the exact copy of the array, which is one, two, three, four, five, and also another element that I just added. Okay, now if I uh, right now console log array as well, save, you see our array is still unchanged. So with the spread array, uh, the beautiful thing about spread array is that it creates a copy of that array, but does not mutate that. So you still have the array one, two, three, four, five, but the new array will take it will take exact copy of your array and then add whatever value you want to add. Okay, so that's uh, a spread uh, array uh, for you. All right, um, so let's talk about DOM manipulation, DOM. So I will show you here, if you do window, so if you do window in the console log, enter, you will see you get a lot of stuff in the window. You can uh, open this up, you can see the alert function is right uh, there. So I can alert something, uh, I can just say working, save, and here we go, that's my, uh, website and it alerted me all right let me go back here okay that's what windows um, objects let me go back here to do window again so we have alert we have uh, a lot of other stuff we also have something called document and through this document you can see that url is available that's 5500 that's coming from my live server and i can create with this dom uh, document object model i can actually create at html element through uh, 
JavaScript. I can create, I can add styles, I can uh, set attributes to JavaScript without creating any CSS file or any HTML. So let's go ahead and just do that. Just give you an example. I do have uh, a separate video about DOM manipulation. It's a shorter video. If you want to check that out, I'll link that in the card and the description below. You can do that. But I'll give you like a simple um, a rundown here with uh, a DOM manipulation. So right now, let's go ahead and get rid of this. Let me go back to my page. And here, I'm going to get rid of this. And right now, this is my page, right? And I have only JavaScript crash course here. Okay, so in the index, I want to create something. I want to create right here. Um, let's say I'm on a, I want to create a div. I want to get this div a class. Yes, section. Copy. So this div right here is exist on the page. It just does not have anything. It does not have any width, height, nothing. So I want to create something. I want to give, let's say, an UL or list or something in that um, in that div. Let, let me see if I can do this. Well, first of all, I'm going to do const. I'm going to grab this element from my uh, HTML, grab this class. And I can do that by saying simply document. In fact, let me create a variable first. I'm going to say uh, section equals to um, document dot I want to use query selector that's just I prefer using query selector you can use um, since it is a class you can use get element by class uh, you can use if you want to just directly uh, take the diff you can use uh, get element by tag I usually use query selector because it's just simply I can just choose within quotation and then just I can actually use the same uh, as a CSS selector. So I will go ahead and grab that class here, copy, and here, save. So I do have, I grabbed this section, I do have access to this div. Within this div, I can now create something else. Let's create another variable, let's call a para, that's kind of like for paragraph. In this paragraph, I'm going to create uh, a p tag. Okay, so document, without ever going to in the HTML, I can create a p tag from JavaScript uh, with uh, something called create element. And here uh, in the quotation mark, I'll say p. So this is the element I want to create. Okay. And now I want to also add para dot text content equal to uh, this is a para. Now you see, instead of writing in HTML, I'm writing the paragraph to the J uh, JavaScript, save. Now I do have this access to this section right here, which is this div, and also I have this uh, element I created, which is in this variable para, and then in para.text content, I'm saying that this is a para. Okay, this string now belongs to this p tag. Uh, through text content, but this para is now kind of like in in uh, like kind of like in the cloud. You can you cannot really see it. Uh, you will be, you will be seeing it uh, if I append that into this section. I actually attached this paragraph to the section itself. So for that, I also I already created the variable section here. Dot. I'm gonna say append. Append and then in parentheses, I'll have para here. And if I save this, as you can see right now, it is showing um, this is a para. Okay. All right. So this is how you create uh, element. Like you can create a uh, anchor tag. You can create h1. Uh, in fact, let's do h1 right here. Not j1. H1 right here and save. You see that now it is much more bigger H1 with this para. You can do other stuff as well. You can actually create and give like a style. So since I already have para, I can just say, um, let's do style equals. And within this quotation, I can actually add some CSS style. So I can actually add color. Uh, let's say it's going to be blue. So if I save this, you see that it is now applying without creating any CSS, I can add a style to this paragraph to JavaScript. And this is going through DOM manipulation document. 
All right. Uh, you can change that. You can also add another class to this section. So let's say you want to add like a para dot class dot class list dot. You can add uh, a class that is going to be um, like remove or something like this, right? Remove or something like. So if you save this one, um, you can actually see in uh, in the element itself. If I go to the body and then in here you see that h1 now has a class of remove that I just added okay uh, you can add some class you can remove some class uh, with JavaScript we just uh, remove like this so you can do a lot of stuff with DOM manipulation so I, I recommend you to check that uh, video out and uh, guys, this has been a long video. I hope uh, it has helped you in any way. If it does, let me know. Let me know in the comment below. Uh, and then uh, like the video, share the video. If it if this video helped you in any, any way, it means a lot. And uh, the next video will be about a project. We'll create a project that will incorporate most of what we learned in this video with JavaScript. So we'll be creating a focus app where we'll be talking about filter. Uh, filter functions. We'll be using local storage in uh, in our Chrome browser. If you want to see that video, uh, stay tuned and subscribe if you're not. And thank you for watching, guys. Uh, we'll see you in the next one.